This is QD Clinic, ACR 22. Hi, I'm Jack Cushwood, room now. QD Clinic this week has cases germane to research being presented at ACR 2022 starting this Saturday. Today's case is inflammatory myositis. And I could fill in the blanks here with age and presentation differences, but I'm going to talk about generally about a myositis patient. And specifically, I'm going to raise the issue, what kind of patient with inflammatory myositis is someone who you think needs a malignancy workup? You know it's a test question, right? It's always been there. What patients with inflammatory myositis are more likely to have a malignancy, either before, during, or after the diagnosis of myositis? Again, it's a moving target, and the research hasn't been all that strong. I think for the purpose of the test question, for me, the answer always was male over 50, dermatomyositis, etc. And now it's evolved, and in more recent years, there are a lot more people who are being a lot more proactive about screening for malignancy. But if a lot of your patients are over the age of 50, is this really a true co-association? The research says yes, it is. But... Again, what's going to guide you? So, again, the case that's in your head, is it young or old? Is it male or female? Is it polymyositis, dermatomyositis, overlap myositis, juvenile dermatomyositis, inclusion body myositis? And then, God forbid, how many serologic tests must you order to make sure that you know that the risk has been heightened? Well, these are kind of complex questions, and the good news is it's going to be presented at ACR on Saturday, November the 12th. Um, Oldroyd and colleagues representing the International Myositis Assessment and Clinical Studies Group has actually gone through the process of coming up with um, 2022 cancer screening recommendations for patients with idiopathic inflammatory arthritis. I think it's going to be a great presentation. I think you should look for it. I'm going to be there. Uh, again, this is a group of international um, myositis mavens from 22 countries who got together, went through a Delphi method to identify what the most important questions are, and then they, as a group, scored it. So some of this is evidence, some of this is expert opinion. They came up with 18 recommendations uh, of whom, I what did they say, that 15 of them were strong and uh, three of them were conditional. Uh, and what's unique about this particular approach that they took is they want you, based on patient's clinical and serologic um, status, to characterize the patient as either being uh, low risk or high risk. And that's sort of important. What they say in their um, in the abstract, and it will be interesting to see if they change their presentation, is that everybody should get sort of basic stuff, what I would call health maintenance stuff, labs, appropriate x-rays and interventions that are appropriate for that person's age, and health maintenance. Also, you should probably be looking at whatever the guidelines are in your country for someone who you're considering that might have a cancer. But what they do say that helps you, the clinician, is that you don't necessarily need a screening evaluation for patients with JDM, juvenile idiopathic inflammatory myositis or juvenile dermatomyositis, or inclusion body myositis patients. That's kind of good. Um, they say that all patients should have serologic studies, and I find this a bit surprising. That includes an, a myositis-specific autoantibody panel. That's like Joe one pl 7 mi 2 all those. And then add to that another panel that's the myositis-associated antibodies, and that would include MDA5, NXP2, uh, TIF1, gamma. And I find that a little surprising um, to do that on all patients with myositis. We'll see. Again, these are recommendations. These have not yet been proven to be truly cost-effective and applicable to on a population level. That's one of my concerns about guidelines like this. Nonetheless, they're smart about saying high risk versus low risk. For instance, low risk are patients who have um, JO1 and antisynthetase antibodies, overlap syndromes, Raynaud's, ILD features, right? On the other hand, they point out that they felt that high risk were patients with dermatomyositis and those who had specific antibodies associated with cancer like TIF1-gamma or NXP2. 
those with an older onset over age of 40, those who have activity despite therapy, dysphagia, and skin necrosis. And then there's intermediate things, too, that you're going to hear at their presentation on Saturday, November 12th. This is, by the way, this is abstract number 002. I think that means it's a plenary session. Uh, it is, actually is a plenary session um, 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 presentation on the first day of the meeting. Once you have that identified whether the patient has um, high, intermediate, or low risk, then you can you know, gauge your evaluation. And I think they're going to go into that. For instance, high risk screening is going to be appropriate for age. I mean, for sex. So um, while you might do CT scans in males and males and females, women might be more apt to have cervical screening, pelvic ultrasound, mammograms. Men might need a PSA. Everyone should have considerations of CA125 and fecal occult blood assessments. So really interesting. Helps guidelines. It'd be interesting to see how this performs when put to the test. Uh, I want you to know that Room Now is going to have extensive coverage of ACR 2022 from Philadelphia. I'm going to be there. We have 18 faculty and about 10 KOLs who will be reporting. You know, people like Artie Cavanaugh, Michelle Petrie, Len Calabrese, uh, Peter Nash, uh, Leanne Ginsler, et cetera. And then our, our usual faculty who you who you know are just great. Um, what you need to know is that you can consume this meeting real time. That you can stay up to date on things that happen every day. One, we're going to present to you and send to you twice, day, twice a day emails that will tell you the highlights of the meeting from that morning and that evening. You might want to click on that. Second, um, you might want to look for a few things that I think are really about up being up to date. One would be our daily recaps every day, 5 p.m., starting Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. The Room Now faculty is going to get together and say, what was your favorite stuff from today? And they're going to discuss it. 15-minute video and 15-minute podcast. Next, there's going to be topic panels. Um, specific topics are going to be discussed starting Sunday at 7 p.m. And then also on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Again, these are, these are going to be by invite for you rheumatologists. Everybody else can watch it on the Room Now website or on our YouTube channel or on Twitter. These are going to be out there at 7 p.m. And we're going to have topic panels on rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, uh, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. And the meeting's going to end up on Thursday with Rheumatology Roundup, Artie Cavanaugh, and myself. Again, this is how you can get real-time information from what's happening at ACR. We're excited. We hope you are too. Take care.